Hello students, looking at current affairs for 24th April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 15, we'll look at them in detail. The first one, lockdown ensured growth of cases remained linear, says government. So India has managed to maintain a linear growth, means not an exponential growth, but a gradual growth of COVID-19 cases over one month period during the lockdown. This is what Union Health Ministry has said. So the facts and figures are here, you can see. So, India's growth rate, you can see, has subsided. You can see countries, other countries' growth rate has also been shown. How South Korea went down. Israel is taking a dip. Pakistan lies here. You can see even Iran, Germany, Italy, Spain have taken a downward turn. So, India's curve mimics that of Belgium, it is said, which too locked down early, though its testing rates are much higher. Then here you have a projection based on research work, which estimates that the death toll due to COVID-19 may rise to 14,000 a week by May 30th. So you can see number of ICU patients and ventilators projected to be in use by May 13th is provided here based on you know, present data. So, okay. so concerns are still there. Then here you have clause allowing FIR against firms for COVID-19 cases goes. So government has withdrawn this clause which was allowing filing of an FIR against a company and its management if an employee tests positive for COVID-19. So concerns have been raised by Indian industries and the policy has now been revised. The Ministry of Home Affairs spokesperson has said that penalties were under the Disaster Management Act of 2005. So it would be applicable at that time it was said it would be applicable if the offense occurred with the consent and cognizance or due to negligence of the employer. So a fire would be registered against them if an employee is found to be positive for COVID-19. But then it is said that there can be other reasons also for the employee being becoming COVID-19 positive and this uh, such a clause is becoming a hindrance in starting of businesses now. So that is why government has withdrawn this clause now it has been stated. Policy has been revised and FIR clause has been removed. And on the other hand, uh, Environment Minister Mr. Prakash Javadekar tweeted that government had never issued any such directive that FIR would be registered against the factory. It said this is a rumor. While Home Ministry says that such a clause has been withdrawn. So, subject to compliance with standard operating procedures, no fresh license or statutory approval is also needed for resumption of permitted activities. So, partial easing of the lockdown has already been initiated as such on April 20. So, for that, there will be no requirement of any fresh license or statutory approval as such. So, permitted activities can be resumed. Then next is first batch of seafarers disembark in Mumbai. So, a total of 145 crew members disembarked from US cruise ship Marilla Discovery on 23rd April. This is the first batch of Indian seafarers to be allowed by the country to return. So they have spent they have spent over 40 days in Indian waters. So Ministry of Shipping brought out an order so they can return back to the country. So there will be three phased returning which has been uh, initiated now. So first phase is be, will be for allowing seamen on ships docked at Indian ports. So every when the lockdown was announced uh, as such on 24th May, Everything, everybody was locked in the place where they were located. So those ships which were docked at Indian ports, they were not allowed to leave. To. So first phase is with, uh, these seamen will be allowed to uh, disembark. Second phase, ships in deep sea will be allowed to return. And the final stage, those who have disembarked from ships and signed off in foreign countries will be allowed to return. So this three phase return has been proposed now. And it is also said that seafarers in foreign countries, the third phase will come into effect only when government lifts its ban on flights and allows others Indians stranded abroad to return to. So at that time, the, the seafarers will also be allowed to return who are in foreign countries. Then next is DRDO develops mobile virology lab. So Defense Minister Rajnath Singh has inaugurated through video conference a mobile virology research and diagnostic laboratory. So, this has been developed by DRDO along with ESIC Hospital of Hyderabad and private industry. So, this lab, mobile lab will be helpful in carrying out diagnosis of COVID-19 and in uh, virus culturing for 
the drug screening even convalescent plasma derived therapy can be conducted here comprehensive immune profiling of patients towards vaccine development and even early clinical trial specifics can be developed in this lab so this is having also biosafety level 3 as it's a combination of biosafety level 3 and biosafety level 2 lab and it has been set up in a record time of 15 days. It can process 1000 to 2000 samples a day. So it has uh, complied with all biosafety standards of World Health Organization too, as well as of ICMR. It means international guidelines. First such mobile lab was developed by Research Center Imarat of Hyderabad in consultation with ESIC laboratory. And these are mobile labs. So mobile labs means they can be positioned anywhere in the country. Then next is. Former bureaucrats flagged minority harassment in letters to CMs, lieutenant governors. So, a group of 101, foreign, uh, 101 former civil servants have written to chief ministers and lieutenant governors of all states and union territories, expressing anguish over reports of alleged harass harassment of Muslims in some parts of the country, particularly after the meeting of Tablighi Jamaat in Delhi's Nizamuddin in March 2020. So, they have sent a, to the letter copied to Prime Minister Narendra Modi too. They have sought directions to all public functionaries to remain vigilant in preventing social boycott of any community and to ensure that all entitlements including medical and hospital care, rations and financial assistance are available equally to all those who are in need. Then next is. Dearness allowance for central staff frozen till July 2021. The finance minister has issued an order freezing the dearness allowance DA to central employees and dearness relief to pensioners at current rates till July 2021. So dearness allowance, you should know what it is. It is given as uh, you know, taking care of inflation because uh, salaries are fixed, they do not vary regularly. So to ensure that uh, real income is protected against inflation because of price rise in general. So then dearness allowance is also paid, which is a percentage of the basic pay. So this dearness allowance is uh, taken as a particular uh, varies from January in January and July. So every six months, you can see it it is uh, taken as a percentage. So now the finance minister has said that uh, this uh, dearness allowance will be frozen, means it's not going to be paid from January one two thousand twenty till. July, January 21, 2000, January 1, 2021 for a year. So due from Jan 1, 2020, July 1 as well as January 1 shall not be paid. So this uh, dearness allowance and dearness relief will be at current rates now. And uh, also the, from these periods, errors as such for the period from Jan 1 to Jan, June 21, 30, 2021 will not be paid. So that has been clarified. This will result in combined savings on a, as such for the central government to the tune of rupees 37,530 crore rupees as such and for states also because states also follow central government orders so state government employees also if they are also having such provisions then their states will save to the tune of rupees 82,566 crore rupees so government is spending a lot on health care and this is another way in which it is garnering money to ensure that it can uh, uh, it can you know, put up with the expenditure which has been called for. So, dearness allowance of central government employees has been frozen. The next is Karnataka gives Devanahalli Chakota new bits. So, endowed with unique taste and flavor, this is GI tag, geographical indication tag, the product, uh, a fruit, Devanahalli Pomelo, which is a citrus fruit popularly known as Chakota. So it has GI tag, Karnataka has a GI tag for it. It is, uh, it is grown in Devanahalli and Dodaballapur regions of Karnataka. So Karnataka Horticultural Department is now giving a fresh push to its cultivation. It is set to provide the plant to interested farmers. So basically you should know about this Devanahalli Pomelo. It is a fruit from Karnataka, GI tag fruit. So this is a detail given, it is red inside. It's a citrus fruit pinkish to red in color inside. The next is Kamakya Temple Festival called off. So with the lockdown, the annual festival at Kamakya Temple in Guwahati, Assam has been cancelled for the first time in recorded history. This temple is on top of Nilachal Hills. It faces, uh, uh, it has northern face slope and it faces down to Brahmaputra River. 
it has been said to have been built by demon king naraksura and records are there the earliest records of it are regarding its uh, it been rebuilt in 1565 by coach king nara naraya so kamakhya temple is one of the 51 shakti peeths or the holy sites of the followers of shakti cult so these 51 shakti peeths are each one representing a body part of sati who was lord shiva's companion and the kamakhya temple houses the yoni the female genital symbolized by a rock and the festival which is celebrated the ambubachi mela annually aids marks the menstruation of the goddess and this year it will not be organized so here you can see this is the kamakhya temple yeah, on top of nilachal hills in guwahati assam it's a shakti peet so assam shakti as such is uh, related to tantric practices too and kamrup uh, assam has been traditionally known as kamrup desh and has been associated with tantric practices and shakti worship the next is trump signs executive order restricting migration so immigration has been restricted by us president donald trump he has signed an executive order barring certain categories of immigrants from admission to us for 60 days so this new order will be in effect and it will prevent individuals even from bringing their parents adult children or siblings into the us so, so such uh, people coming in they are called chain migration this is called chain migration by president trump so when an individual migrates he brings his parents or adult children siblings so they would also be prevented from immigration so this is a presidential order and there are exemptions actually to it because those who are already in the us seeking to switch their visa status to permanent residency they will be exempted also i mean uh, it, it may be amended or extended at appropriate time is what the president said so actually number of uh, joblessness or number of jobless in america has increased significantly 4.4 million americans have declared themselves unemployed in the week of ending april 18 so total number of unemployed in america is now around 26 million since the pandemic began so steps have been taken by us president to ensure that jobs stay with uh, with americans it does not go out to immigrants so some immigrant visa holders actually will be exempted to the, these include those who are within the country already in us as we saw seek and also those who are doctors nurses healthcare workers covid-19 researchers and even their spouses and minor dependents they would also be exempted from the suspension order it is said in 2019 just over 1 million people got green cards in us so that is permanent residency which they get and 56% of our those who switched their visa status from within us they got green cards and 14 44% entered the us on immigration visa so the next is syrian torture trial opens in germany so this is two alleged former syrian intelligence officers they i have gone on trial in germany they are accused of crimes against humanity and this is the first court case worldwide over state sponsored torture by bashar al assad regime of syria so these two suspects uh, they have been accused of carrying out crimes against humanity while in charge of al khatib detention center in damascus so the other one also fellow defendant helped to arrest protesters also so these are the two who will undergo trial now in germany the next is repo auction gets poor response so this was the first auction of the second tranche of rbi's targeted long term repo operations 2.0 so targeted long term repo operation 1 who had already been conducted by rbi now second one was proposed and this was the first auction under kltro 2.0 so this the rbi had stated this is to provide liquidity support to nbfcs non banking finance companies but it received poor response the total value of bids received from banks was almost 50% less than the notified amount so rbi received 14 bids worth 12850 crores in the auction that was concluded on 23rd april the notified amount was about 25000 crores so at least 50% of the total fund actually was asked by rbi to be mandatorily deployed in small and mid sized nbfs so lack of risk appetite of banks is evident here because the response was low so now the only option it is said is partial credit guarantee can be provided by government of india so 
as a scheme which was initiated in 2019 or so so that uh, nbfc's liquidity ch challenges can be tackled so nbfc's are non banking finance companies including even housing finance companies and mutual fund investors so uh, what ha what is being seen is they have liquidity problem because banks have not extended three month repayment moratorium which has been provided by rbi to nbfc's and nbfc's on their part have given this moratorium of three months to their customers in repaying loans so nbfc's are facing a liquidity crunch and banks are not able ready to lend them further to banks have turned risk averse and have choked lending so this is the response to targeted long term repo operation to of rbi so earlier to it has conducted these in various tranches you can see this is the latest figure it was done in on march 27 to so that time you can see the bid to cover ratio was high now it is only 0.5 because this time the rbi had rbi had put a condition of 50% of it should go to nbfcs the next is rbi to restart operation to wish to manage yields so this is regarding open market operations which have been announced by rbi this this is actually under operation twist so operation twist was initiated by rbi in december 2019 it was used by it for the first time so these are open market operations in which rbi buys long term government bonds and sells short term bonds so the idea is to soften long term yields so long term yields should go low so rbi has announced these simultaneous purchase and sale so the announcement uh, based on this now we have seen earlier operation twist being conducted to and now another operation twist will be conducted so center will buy rupees 10000 crore of bonds maturing between 2026 and 2030 so it will buy long term bonds and sell the same amount of treasury bills which are of one year duration so these you can see are of 5 to 10 years duration and the bills are of one year duration so the long term bonds will be purchased and short term bonds will be sold by rbi this is called operation twist so this move is to aid monetary transmission by prompting banks to pass on the interest rate cut benefits to their customers too so repo rate has also been reduced by rbi earlier by 75 basis points it is presently at 4.4% so repo rate is also down so it is it is encouraging banks to provide loans to uh, the the economy loans in the economy so this is a uh, in general open, open market operation so when rbi wants to pump money in the economy it wants to kick start the economy central uh, rbi would purchase bonds from banks and give money in return so this high money supply will result in when there is more money then the interest rates go low and banks will give loans to individuals and companies so this is open market operation when rbi is uh, when any central bank is buying government bonds and when it wants to control inflation it will sell government bonds so low money supply means high interest rate so this is how open market operations are conducted by central banks and presently open market operation is not just when rbi is because we want to kick start economy presently so uh, rbi is not just uh, buying bonds it's buying long term bonds and sh selling short term government bonds so that is operation twist So you can see after operation twist how yields on one year treasury bills have increased and uh, yields on 10 year bonds are down so you can see 10 year bonds are here and this is one year bonds so this is yield in percentage which has been shown so it has been conducted you can see on 19 december 23 december 30 december So operation twist was announced, and then twist two, operation twist one and two have already been conducted, and now another one has been announced by RBI. Then next is government to suspend insolvency and bankruptcy code rules for up to one year. So insolvency and bankruptcy code it has provisions for initiation of insolvency proceedings against defaulters. So. now presently due to covid 19 our government is considering amending the insolvency and bankruptcy code law to suspend these provisions for one year so these are the three sections which may be suspended so ordinance will be promulgated for this so banks can restructure loans too because they not be nbf uh, non uh, nps there so here you can see these or uh, this ordinance will be promulgated to suspend three sections section 7 section 9 and section 10 of ibc 
Section 7 relates to initiation of corporate insolvency proceedings by financial creditors. Section 9 is regarding initiation of corporate insolvency proceedings by operational creditors. So there is a difference between financial creditors and operational creditors. Financial creditors are those who give loans to a company and they have not been repaid. So they can initiate insolvency proceedings against the company. And operational creditors are not who are giving loans in terms of money, but those who have, say, given raw material and they have not been paid yet. Or in case of even real estate, when you have invested in a house and you have not been given any return, you've not got the house yet so those are called operational creditors who have given their money to the company and have not got their live in return or given their product to the company and got not got the money in return so those are called operational creditors so those two these two provisions should be suspended for a year and another one is related to filing of application for insolvency resolution by the corporate itself by the company itself so these three sections are expected to be suspended from six months to one year so ordinance would be promulgated so the news has come complete detail will come once the ordinance is in place so we'll discuss it in detail too and next is listed firms can raise funds six months post buyback offer so as uh, some relaxed uh, relief measures for uh, companies suffering from covid19 cab has also come up with uh, some relief measures and these are one, it has allowed listed companies to raise funds after six months of making a buyback offer. So when companies, listed companies make a buyback offer, they have to wait for 12 months before they can uh, uh, make an offer. So this uh, is in normal circumstances, but now this has been reduced to six months to ensure that funding activity of listed companies is not affected. So this relaxation has been provided by CAB. Also, it has provided relaxation in norms for preferential allotment by companies with stressed assets. So, similar relaxations have been also been provided. Uh, you know, certain compliance norms for entities that are planning to come up with IPO, initial public offering. So, certain compliance norms for them also be, have been relaxed. The definition for entities eligible for making fast track rights issues has also been enlarged. So, more companies can make such rights issues. So, it is easing business for companies, easing provisions for companies. So, CAB has also done its part. Also, its regulator, that is CAB, has said that if an issuer defaults on payment obligations due to lockdown or moratorium allowed by RBI, then valuation agencies should not term it as a default. So, default on payment will not be a default. The way RBI has given relaxation, in lieu of that, even CAB has said that valuation agency should not call it a default. So that shares go down as such. And the last news is ISRO invites technology proposals for human space flight missions. So Directorate of Human Space Program of ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, has invited proposals to develop indigenous technologies for its future human space flight missions. So this is announcement of opportunity. AO issued which suggests 17 potential areas of work for national research and academic agencies. So these areas of work include, uh, you know, they range from food and medicine, which will be eaten by astronauts during low Earth space trips, anti-radiation and thermal protection technologies for spacecraft, life support system for astronauts, inflatable habitats, uh, and even robotic interfaces during complex, mission, complex missions. So uh, announcement of uh, opportunity has been issued by the Human Space Program. So this is for Gaganya which has been announced by ISRO in August 2018 that in India's first human space flight would take place around 2022. It is pegged to cost 10,000 crore rupees. And it, the plan is to send three astronauts to a distance of 400 kilometers in space in a special space port. They will circle Earth for around three to seven days. Already four pilots of Indian Air Force are currently being trained in Moscow and they will be the first set of potential candidates for Gaganyaan. So, this is regarding Gaganya, which is proposed to take place by, by the time India celebrates its 75th Independence Day in 2022. Chandrayaan 3 has also been proposed. The mission will cost around 600 crore rupees and will try to land in the lunar south pole like Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2, we have seen the lander. Landing could not take place. Contact was lost. It was a hard landing. And this is further detail about Gaganyan, which we discussed, how Indian astronauts will be sent in space. They are expected to travel on GSLV MK3 launch vehicle. And flight is expected to take off from uh, Sri Harikota. So, 
we will require many items for the astronauts who will go to space like food, suits. Unmanned trials will also take place before the actual flight takes, takes off. So, steps work is being done in this direction for Gaganyana. So, that is, thank you.